I had given up all hope. The first ceasefire had failed. The word from Liberia was that 200 to 300 people were dying daily. So I, I begin to really question if nonviolence ever solved any problem. And then on this day, the news on Yahoo was that an attack had taken place. And the images from Liberia, where two little boys were standing brushing their teeth, where the missile landed, those boys were crushed to sidings. The only thing they could recognize of the two little boys were the rubber slippers that they wore. That's, that was the only thing that you could recognize that human beings were standing to where that missile landed. And in my anger, I went back to the peace store, told Sugar, sent for women. And it was just like really, really angry. And that particular moment has reinforced a theory that I have. That anger is like liquid. It has no shape. Where you pour it is the shape it will take. So when our warlords get angry, they pour it into a violent container. And when it is frozen, it comes out in the shape of violence. At that moment, I was so angry that if I had an AK-47, maybe that would be the story people would be telling. A woman went to a peace stop and killed everyone in the room. But because I didn't have it, and I didn't think that was the solution to the problem, we decided we would barricade the hall. And no one would come out, or no one would go in. No one would take food or water. And at that moment, the security men decided they were going to arrest me. And with the word that I was obstructing justice, I am fighting for justice. Whatever shred of it that I've been socialized to believe exists, especially as it relates to the protection of the most vulnerable people during war, and you are accusing me of obstructing that same justice, in that moment of anger and the threat of arresting me, I said I'm going to strip naked. Because everything that I believed in, and someone asked me, what is the difference for a country where women have been raped every day, for one woman to strip, what difference does that make? Two things. When you're being raped, your clothes are torn off you. When you're being raped, with a gun to your head, you are told to take off your clothes. For a woman to strip in protest of pain is different from a woman being forced so at that moment, every shred of my own integrity, of the integrity of all of the Liberian women that we had, that little bit of it that was left, I decided I would give it to you in protest of my peace, in protest of destroying everything that I've been socialized to believe. I think my childhood of that happy place that community where everyone existed flashed past me. And I said I was straight. And by the time I took off the first layer, and every woman in Liberia wears a short pants under her clothes because of the war. We used to do that to make it very difficult for rape and makes it easy when you have to run and something is dropping. So that first, then the Liberian men came running and screaming. No, do no, do But as they interviewed the warlords, one of the warlords said, they asked him, what difference? He said there was not a single man in that room that didn't ask himself, what have you done to bring our women to a place where they're prepared to dishonor themselves? So that was the, the moment. Afterwards, two things happened. The people in the hall got sober. We out there doing the protest got more radical. Our messages was just radical. Killers of our children, before we used to write, please give us peace. Afterwards, killers of our children, International Criminal Court awaits you. <laughs> Kill of our children, we will not give you jobs. And the abuses they used to rain on us as we sat ceased. So no one, so they really took us seriously. And I think every time they went into that room, they realized, wow, there's a group out there who's really holding us accountable 
for whatever we do in here. So in less than three weeks, a peace agreement was signed. Mm -hmm. 